Welcome back to The Last Door. Season 2, Episode 2 has just come out. So, let's jump right into it. I must forget nothing. Everything must be set. When the time comes, and I am visited again. For a moment, the sky was dark. We heard the calls of a thousand birds. But another sound rose above them. A sound I cannot describe. What? What did just happen in here? He grammatically awkwardly said, Where is Miss Connie? We are late. Okay, yeah, so the previous episode for this series came out, I want to say a couple months ago? Which really isn't that long, but it's long enough for me to forget most things about what I actually did in the previous episode. However, I do remember that the previous game, I believe, started and ended with Miss Connie in this room. I think she was... I think it started with her boarding up the windows and stuff like that, and trying to make sure that nobody could get inside. And then... for the entire previous episode, or almost the entire previous episode, I believe we played this guy. And at the end of the episode, it actually ended with him and this other guy, I don't remember their names at the moment. Um, it ended with them walking up the hill up to this building. Which it turns out, was where Miss Connie was, and she is the person that we played as at the very beginning of the episode, so the whole thing kind of came full circle. And I believe we were just coming up to her place while she was doing something inside of here, and I don't know if she was doing, I think she's doing some sort of a ritual or something of the sort, and there was a big flock of crows, I think, outside. And that's really all I remember. And it just said there was a horrible sound that they could hear above the sound of the birds. So I'm guessing that was... This. Whatever this is. I guess the ritual is complete. It is... Ashes. Is this what's left of her? Did she get vaporized? And smeared across the room in a big X? The windows are covered with wooden planks. It looks as if she were trying to keep someone from entering. Or something from getting out. <laughs> True. Chalk. A circle. Drawn hastily on the floor. She thought it could prevent what she knew was about to happen. But she was wrong.
I don't know what to make of all this. I do. Hmm? Are you alright, Kaufman? <laughs> Hold on. I, I just want to savor the irony of this. Kaufman just coughed. Just let, just let that sink in for a minute. Are you alright, Kaufman? You seem to be coughing. It is nothing, mein Freund. Just a bit of a cold. It can't be. Your name's not Coldman. Now, mein Freund... I think we should talk. I hope I'm saying mein Freund right. In light of the events we have recently witnessed, the matter cannot be delayed any further. You must make an important decision. It is not yet too late to go back to our daily lives. If you do not want to continue, you must forget all about your patient, Jeremiah Devitt. You'll have to keep to yourself everything you have learned about the mystery of his disappearance, and never talk about it again. But, should you wish to continue this search, you will need to accept the consequences, whatever they may be. Please do not take this decision lightly. The path ahead is not without peril. You know my answer already, Kaufman. I must know what happened to Devitt. So be it then. As you may have already realized, this matter involving your patient transcends the limits of psychiatry as we know it. We are not dealing with the effects of trauma, or the demons of the subconscious, at least not in the terms we are used to. We are dealing with something old, something dark. A sinister truth that has been buried deep for generations. This man, Alexandre Dupree, and his organization, I think they seek to uncover these secrets, and I fear they might have already. Miss Connie's fate, whatever it was, must be related somehow, but my knowledge of this area is simply not sufficient. We must pay a visit to an old friend, someone I never thought I would want to see again. The man who inter introduced me to the extended scientific field of the occult. My mentor, Professor Adam Wright. Ah, looks like we're going to be visiting multiple places again this episode. I've got a map. Wickport. Said it the right manner. Not the wrong manner. I'm sorry, that joke is terrible. Oh, pretty. I doubt he is away at this time of day. Perhaps he cannot hear us from the front. Let us try the back door. Mrs. Oakwood. She is the manor's housekeeper. Yes? Who is it? Good morning, Mr. Oakwood. Don't you remember me? Why, Dr. Kaufman! Bless my soul. It's been so long I hardly recognize you. How nice to see you again. Allow me to introduce my colleague. Dr. John Wakefield is a professor at home. We would like to see him. Why, yes, Doctor, of course. I'm quite forgetting myself. Let me take you to him. It's real good of you to come. He receives so few visitors these days on account of his condition. His condition? Oh, sir, I'm right sorry. I thought you knew. 
The professor, he... He suffers from an ailment afflicting his brain. He is now entirely confined to his bed. Professor Wright, you have visitors. One of them is your old friend. Look, look, do you recognize him? It is Johan, Professor. Your old pupil. I reckon he does remember you, Johan. It's been a long time since I've seen him so excited. Wait, is it Johan? Before it had two N's, now it's only got one N. I'm confused. I don't think it's just John. I, I think it's Johan. I'm gonna go with Johan. I'll leave you two to talk to the professor. It may be difficult to keep him on one subject for long, but oh, it does him so much a world of good to speak with old friends. Should you need my assistance, I'll be in the backyard. Professor? Uncle James, you're back. It is I, Professor. Johann Kaufman. Where is father? Where has he been taken? He suffers from some kind of memory loss. Yes, I'm afraid he will not tell as much in this state. If we could but stimulate his memories. Maybe then he could tell us of his research. Something to unravel the mystery of the playwright. Perhaps. We have few other options in any case. Let us try. Why don't you explore the manor? There may be some object we can use to jog the professor's memory. Meanwhile, I will try and talk to him about the time we researched together. That could also help him remember. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm looking for some sort of stimulant to pump inside of him to make him remember. Hmm, yes, stimulants, drugs. No, okay, it's probably just something that jogs his memory. Large wardrobe of engraved wood. Very expensive, no doubt. The snow is falling outside, slow and silent. Professor Wright's gaze remains fixed on the window, as though he were waiting for someone. A painting of the ocean in the end of the afternoon. There's a figure in black at the beach, but its face is... Its face is hide by a hood. Its face is hidden by a hood. Yeah, that's always been a weird quirk of the uh, the Last Door series. The writing is sometimes kind of awkward. I believe the developers are Spanish, so I'm assuming that their English is not exactly perfect. And that's the reason why. A lamp provides a soft glow that somehow lacks warmth. Yeah, this place is very cold, isn't it? It's very pale blue. An engraving on paper. The script is from a language unknown to me. It's locked. The sign of the door reads, Attic. Maybe I can find a key. An oil painting. It shows an obscure medieval scene. Oh my god, this is an expensive bathroom. I've always loved the sound design in this game. Listen to the echoing footsteps in this huge bathroom. It's little details like that that really add up. A gilded pipe. It runs from the floor to the ceiling. Though I see myself in the mirror, 
the reflection is strangely distorted. A large porcelain tub, its hefty weight supported on four blackened iron feet. A thin ring of damp residue around its interior suggests recent use. Common radiator. An old stone tower is depicted in the painting. Thorned vines have slithered across the entrance, forming a swarming blockade that almost seems to come alive when stared at for too long. Now this looks much more welcoming. Nice warm color. Ah, how I do love exploring people's homes. A porcelain jar containing some dried branches. What used to be flowers, maybe? Maybe ten years ago? Portrait of Professor Wright. His appearance was quite different back then. An imposing, inquisitive figure. Um, hold on, before I go there. Where does this go? Ooh. Hold on, before I go there. Where does this go? Okay, so this is the front. The snow is just lovely. So many books. Professor Wright has an eclectic collection, from old adventure novels to treaties on the occult sciences. Some of these titles, I believe, have been forbidden by the crown. Wait. Treaties on the occult sciences? Is that the right word? Treaty? Or is it like treatise? I can't remember. Anyway. You know, as beautiful as this place is, part of me thinks, isn't it incredibly dangerous to have a fireplace right next to a bunch of dry books? A tin soldier. It looks to have been painted by hand. It commemorates some military campaign that I've not heard of. painting of the cliffs of this region. The fire burns fiercely, rendering the air thick and heavy in the hall. A globe. The surface is extraordinarily detailed. Judging by the strange shape of the continents, this must derive from a fictional work, or some prehistoric era. Oh. Whoa, I can actually examine it. Okay, this is obviously important. No, go back. Mmm. Okay, I guess I'm probably supposed to know the order. What the hell is that noise? Is that a bunch of birds? It's locked. I can hear the racket of many birds on the other side. What is it with birds in this game? Crows. Everywhere, swarms of crows always looking, watching, waiting. I don't know if these are actually crows as well, but I'm assuming they are. 
Ah, listen to that 3D positional audio on the door, it's so cool! A sea landscape. Fascinating. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. What's that? Gilded pipe. It runs from the room at the end of the corridor to the room upstairs. Okay, that's the thing that heads into the bathroom. That's got to be connected to something. And not just literally connected. I mean, because obviously it's a pipe, so it's connected to something. But, I mean, there's got to be a reason that that's so visible and kind of obvious. I think I'm supposed to do something with it at some point. Yep, from the ground to the corridor. Cast iron wood stove. Hmm. Is that like some old, like super old school way of getting heated water to the bathroom? To the tub? Like, does it get heated here and somehow transferred up somehow hmm bread oven <laughs> this place is definitely old school different ingredients can I make some bread your last jar is filled with spices and pickled food Doors locked shut. Small sign reads, Basement. <laughs> the basement and the attic are both locked. And the bird room. Only the creepiest places, of course. Hello! May I ask you something, Mrs. Oakwood? Of course, Doctor. How did the professor become afflicted? The ailment runs in his family. Mr. Wright suffers from it, as did his father and grandmother before him. It's truly a terrible thing. And to think, all these years Mr. Wright knew what would become of him. May God have pity on his poor soul. This ailment that runs in Professor Wright's family, do you know what its symptoms are? Well, I, I can't speak those very long words physici physicians use. But I can tell you what I see in him. Professor Wright hardly remembers a thing from the last 40 years. It's like he's a child again. With God's mercy, it has now gone so far that it torments him no longer. I will leave you to your work. Thank you for your assistance. Have a good day, Dr. Wakefield. The clear of ice covers the pool of water. And hold on, where does this lead? Oh, you can go around the side. Okay. What is this thing? Strange ornament on the wall. I think I can move it. Go for it. I see pixels. I'm not even quite sure what I'm looking at. Oh. <laughs> what is this, mist? Thingy. Other thingy. Thingy. Other thingy. Okay, so there's only two things. We've got... The castle and the... thingy? Okay, well it was already on thingy, so I guess I'll go to castle. Whatever that means. Well, I'm gonna call that a puzzle solved. Good job.
A fierce lion, damaged by the harsh weather of the coast. Its head is missing. Hmm, this one has its head. Don't know if there's any significance to that. This oak tree looks ancient. Probably older than the manor itself. Don't forget to sweep the scene in any adventure game. It's a very important thing to do. Don't want to miss any pixely hotspots. Nope, we're good. Ah. I think this is related to at least one of those two puzzles that I've found. Either the continent one or... the thingy. A queen has removed her mask. There's an empty hole where her face should be. This statue portrays a peasant woman with her face hidden by a mask. A central statue portrays a cloaked figure holding a clay vessel. The vessel has a small hole in it, just large enough to see a metal object hidden inside. <laughs> of course. There's a key. Alright, so quite clearly I'm supposed to take the clay and smash it open, right? Of course not. Why would we do the sensible thing? The statue portrays a sage hiding his face behind a mask. Clergyman hiding his face behind a mask. Stiff tree. Almost seems like a statue itself. Is that a plaque? Ooh. When the four remove their masks of lies, the path to the grave will be cleared. Okay. I'm down. Mmm. Alright. So, she's the only one with her mask removed, right? Empty hole where her face should be. Yep, hidden. That doesn't actually m mention anything about a mask, just a cloaked figure. Hidden, and hidden. Hmm. So there's nothing to really do here yet, I think? No, I think we're good. Hold on, let me see if that has a connection to this. only two things. That's so weird. Okay, did that change anything? Oh, it did. Removed his mask. Also removed her mask. Okay, so that just, like, stays? What if I move it back? Would he put his mask back on? Let's go check it. I mean, I've already changed it so many times that it's gotta be... It must stay in this state. Because I switched it back a bunch of times. If it's simply... If you only have to hit the other one, you know, one of those symbols once, and then his mask is always off, it wouldn't make any sense, because I've already switched it a bunch of times, so... Yeah, now it's back. But that's weird, because isn't that the position it started in? Didn't it start in... This position? So is it actually supposed to be left in the starting position? Because if so, that's really weird. That doesn't seem right. I think there's something about that that I'm not understanding. Also, again, I wonder if this gargoyle's head is at all related to the masks. Missing his face. It's not just missing its face, though. It's missing its entire head. Okay, um... I think I missed an area. That's the birds, right? Yeah. I 
And this is locked, right? Mm hmm Oh, actually, I don't think I am missing an area. No, this goes out to the back. Yeah, and then this is to the basement, and it's locked. Okay. Is there nothing I can pick up here? Like, I can't get a fire going with wood or something? I feel like I'm supposed to start a fire. Either to make bread or to get warm water going. Let's see if I can ask her about the weird stuff in the graveyard. Or whatever that place is. Nope. Hmm. I've got lots of ideas. Like, I don't know, melt the water, uh, steam up the mirror in the bathroom, get a fire going. Um. It's pretty much all I can think of. Let's go back upstairs. I still don't have any any actual items. Hmm. That's locked, that goes nowhere. Okay, have you found anything new? We must find a way to help the professor recover his memories. Won't you try to find some object that the professor may have kept as a memento? Meanwhile, I'll keep telling about the years we spent researching together, okay? Well, that's no help. Hmm. Okay, I think I missed a hotspot or something. Which actually would surprise me, because I've been pretty thorough in searching the entire screen. Or am I supposed to somehow know what to press on the globe? I can't see how I'm supposed to know that. I haven't received anything about locations. Now, I need a map or something to do anything with this. Could probably brute force it, but that's no fun. Is there like a book with a map or something? I can't read any of the books. Oh wait, can I do something with this? Oh! I can pick this up. Could hold some special significance to Professor Wright. Perhaps it will help stimulate his memories. Oh! I forgot about the classic adventure game thing. Always click 20,000 times on everything just in case it does a different thing the next time you click on it. First time I clicked on it was a description. Second time is to pick it up. Gotcha. <laughs> Let's jog his memories by reminding him of his time in the war. Remember the good old days when you almost got killed 20 times a day? Do you recognize this, Professor Wright? Sergeant Downing was sent to the front. The man that returned was not Sergeant Downing. Oh, hold on a minute. That just brought something back. Sergeant Downing. Is that the name? I don't know if that's the name of the person. I'm assuming that's the person that we saw in... It must have been the previous episode, right? Remember the soldier. Remember the flashbacks to what the soldier went through. 
didn't he go into like a mist or something and he said he saw something or felt something in the mist and he was changed or something like that? There's something to do with that. Yeah. And I think that's what he's talking about here. That must be Sergeant Downing. My dearest visitor, he will know where to look. Oh, what a time we will have. Wait, what? Your visitor. What do you mean, Professor? He will have seen the map, and he will know the Book of Travels. The Book of Travels? Yes, yes, he will work it out. But it must not be too easy, no. But he will find the prize, I am sure. Prize? What on earth is he talking about, Kaufman? Something concealed. Something precious. In his adult state, could he have hidden away parts of his research? Hmm. He was always a proud man. He would not easily have forgotten his most groundbreaking work. A sense of its grave importance, at least, would have remained. In his confusion, perhaps, he has holed it away somewhere, for this dearest visitor of his to find. Why don't you explore the manor? Perhaps something will relate to these latest ramblings. Meanwhile, yep, through conversation. Okay. So he's hidden away his research in a puzzle. Some sort of puzzle that bizarrely seems to remind me of the sort of puzzle that would be in an adventure game. Imagine that. Alright, the Book of Travels, huh? Examine. Okay, well, I know what he's talking about, but where's the Book of Travels? Kinda need the book, dude. There's a large volume here, quite worn. It is an illustrated edition of The Travels of Marco Polo. Perhaps this is the Book of Travels that Professor Wright mentioned. There's a mark on one of the pages. We began our journey by crossing the unforgiving desert, always facing the setting sun. At last we arrived at the merciful sight of the great ocean. We followed the coast north, in dear hope of reaching our home soon. Alright, so hold on. Started by crossing desert. I'm gonna write this down. Crossing desert. Facing setting sun. Arrived at ocean. And then went north. Oh, wait, there's more? No. It was not to be. The king of the land we traversed had declared war on the great Khan, so we were forced to return as we had come. We never set foot in that bloody land again. We knew there was a port just a few miles to the south where we could find a boat. Our sea voyage was short as our sails billowed with the powerful southern winds. We reached the most eastern cape and landed there. Our backs to the sea, we marched forth and soon reached home. Okay, I think I understand the first part. Not so sure about the second or third. Well, I'm screwed. Yeah, they go north, blah, blah, blah. We were forced to return as we'd come. But instead of going back the way they came, they went a few miles to the south, found a boat, and then... And then that was it? Well, then they reached the most eastern cape. Is all of that represented on the map? Okay, that's nice. They give me a little thing so I can actually click on it. Um... Okay, well, they crossed the desert. Then arrived at the ocean. I wish I could view this at like one-fourth scale because it's just... I mean, I'm viewing this full-screen 1080p on like a 23... 
point something inch monitor and these are really big pixels. But this is definitely desert, and that's coast. Okay, this, I, I can already tell this is going to take me a while to try to figure out what, yeah, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, well, if I'm not reading this incorrectly, I think I know what to do. So it said that at first they went through the desert, straight towards the setting sun. So straight west, until they reached the great ocean. So I believe that means they went here, and then here. Right, straight, straight west, and then they hit the ocean. And then it said they went north up the coast, which would be all the way up. And then, then I accidentally click out of it, and then... Blah, 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 said that we would force return as we had come, but we never set foot in that bloody land again. We knew there was a port just a few miles to the south where we could find a boat. So they went south until they reached a port, which looks like this. And then it said they reached the easternmost cape on their sea voyage, which, I mean, I don't see any, sign of any, any sort of eastern cape represented here. But I'm assuming since none of the previous things I've clicked on involve this one, that I'm probably supposed to click on this one for their sea voyage. So let's see if that works. So they go towards the setting sun, go north, told to go back, go down to the boat, and then sea voyage. Balls! Alright, well surely I'm supposed to click on every one, right? Um. Yay! Okay, so they didn't quite go as north as I thought. That was the only difference. Seems I've triggered a hidden mechanism. A small compartment has opened in the globe. A sealed letter inside. It is simply addressed to my dearest visitor. Kaufman needs to see this before it is opened. Does he? You could always just remelt the wax and reseal it. Burn it. Okay. I'm just, I just realized, we've completely left the door open. Like, all the heat is just going out of this place. I mean, it's freaking snowing outside, it's gonna be so cold inside. <sighs> I'm such a dick. Kaufman, look, I found an envelope. It was hidden inside a globe that a strange mechanism opened. To my dearest visitor, let us see what is inside. Exactly. This is another part of an intricate riddle. But to what purpose? To conceal something, perhaps? Or just the last acts of a confused and drowning mind? Or perhaps it is to serve as the bulk of the gameplay for an adventure game? I am increasingly of the opinion that this is some mental construct. Some riddle conjured up by the professor's failing mind. He may not even have even understood what he hid. Those seeking wisdom must first know their, un their own foolishness. Reflect on yourself in the heat of the passion to reveal the cold eye of logic. To reveal what the cold eye of logic sees not. <laughs> You know, if I wasn't so familiar with adventure games, I would probably be very confused about this. But I know exactly what to do. Yes, reflect on yourself, use the mirror, in the heat of the passion. That is, start a fire and get some warm water going in there so that the mirror fogs up. A riddle. And who would that visitor be? It's you! That is unknown to me, mein Freund. There's only one way to answer that question. If we can find the answer to the professor's riddle, perhaps we'll be able to solve the, this mystery. Okay, I know what to do. The only problem is I need wood. Like, I need to get a fire going. Um, so I think I need to find an axe and then start taking apart the furniture. That is clearly the most rational thing to do. Or perhaps I can ask the Miss Miss Oakland, Miss Oak Lady, Miss 
Cedar Pine Tree Wood? What's her name? Oops, I just clicked out of the game. Come back. Ew. Yeah, she might know where some wood is. Unless I can just get a fire going. Cast whoa, oh shit, she's right there. <laughs> I saw a thing moving on the left side of the screen, I was confused for a second. I think she's kneading bread. Hi. Is Professor Wright fond of riddles? Indeed, yes. He has long been an enthusiast of every mind game you can imagine. In better days, he would host parties every other month. Themed soirees, he called them. Oh, those were good times. It seems long ago now. So, um... Could you get a fire going? Well, if she intends to bake that, then surely there must be a source of flame somewhere here. Perhaps it's in the basement? Can I really not ask her to start a fire? Hmm. You know, perhaps I'm not supposed to know that I can do the thing yet. Maybe I'm supposed to go to the mirror first, and the, then the game will be like, Oh, yeah, now you know that we know that we know you know that you need to do the thing. Reflect on yourself, so the riddle and the cold eyes, eh, could there be something here hidden somehow? Most likely. If only I could just turn on the tap and set it to hot water. Yeah, it's distorted. Mm-hmm. Common radiator, I guess it's cold, I suppose. I don't actually know what this thing is, to be honest. There's pipes going to and from it. But he doesn't actually say what it is, and it just looks like a box. I mean, I would say it's probably a radiator, but then again, if that's a radiator, then why is there a radiator over here? Hmm. I need heat, I just don't know how. The pipes go up, so I think maybe I'm supposed to go to the attic. But it's locked. The key is probably in the statue. I mean, the key could be to the, to the basement or to the attic. Could be for either, or even to the bird room. So it's hard to say. But I feel like I need to do this before I can even do anything with the statues. We can you go check the statues? Maybe they magically opened? Weirder things have happened. Nah. There's probably a pile of wood somewhere here and I just don't see it. I mean, there's a tree. Could I hack down the tree? Old teapot. Oh, filled with cold water. Okay. Progress. Is there already a fire going? If I want to heat the teapot on the stove, I'll need to start a fire first. The stove already has plenty of wood. Oh, it's got plenty of wood. Okay. Um, wait a minute. Are those matches I see denoted by the literally four pixels that are slightly brighter than the rest on the left side of the screen? I may need these matches later on. Pixel art adventure games. Don't 
Don't watch it. It won't boil. Don't watch it. Oh, okay, boil. Reflect on yourself in the heat of passion. To reveal knowledge that the cold eye of logic sees not. Condensation from the teapot's steam has revealed a hidden message. I'll add this clue to the letter. Knowing yourself, you may look upon your master, meet his imposing gaze, and seek to understand what lies beneath. Thereby learn the question, if not the final answer. Look upon my master. What? Meet his gaze, and then look down. Look upon the eyes of your... Oh, wasn't there a painting that uh, said he looked imposing? Damn it, I keep clicking outside of the game. Stop. No, don't go back in. Yeah, the game doesn't constrain the mouse to the window of the game, so if I move it to my second monitor and click, it minimizes the game. Anyway, this is the one where he's imposing, right? Yeah, look upon your master, blah blah blah. And then look down. Or just look. A uh, small key taped to the back of the picture frame and a note. Oh, don't even have to look down. That was easy. No! I didn't mean to click out of it. What did it say? The question is the world from... Wait. The question is the world from the peak of man's tallest tower. The answer yearns up to it from the root of life and time itself. Um... What? I think it maybe has something to do with the tree? It, but it's just written in a very weird way. The question is the world from the peak of man's tallest tower. That... What does that even mean? The question is the world? That... I don't understand. The answer yearns up to the question? To the world? To... What? Okay, well, <laughs> whatever, found a key. So I'm sure I'll probably find my answer to uh, what that riddle is talking about when I find what door that goes to. But before that, I think I should end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I will continue solving these riddles.